Hey everybody, today we just had the Vanguard Freedom Fest charity event. It is what we call the uh, clan leader event. So this event basically establishes who are the clan leaders for each respective clan, depending on what everybody played, right? So it's going to be like sort of a circuit. I'm not going to get into it. If you're interested, just you know, kind of comment and we can explain more about it. But I decided to play Oracle Think Tank because Battle of Sisters is currently my favorite deck in the format. I've just enjoyed playing it so much and I got placed really well. So... Let's go ahead and get on to the deck. Starting with the Viera starter. Yeah, it's just the best starter. You get the draw, you get the soul. Soul is kind of important in this deck, so it's very good. Then on to the grade threes. We got four copies of Battle Sister Fromage. This card is really, really good. It's kind of exactly what Battle Sister needed. A very good aggressive card that retains hand advantage from calling cards out. And you'll know on place. If you have a Battle Sister Vanguard, basically draw two for a counter boss and a soul blast. And then act. Uh, discard a card, check up to the amount of unique battle systems in the field, and then stack them any way you want. Let's you play defensive, lets you play offensive. If you kind of ran your opponent out of resources, you can just stack crits and go ham, or you can stack defensives and play very safe and try and go in for the kill in the next following turns. Card is really fun. I think this card is great. Uh, four up, obviously. And then next, uh, people were cutting this, but I still think this card is very good. Uh, battle Sister Florentine. Basically, on stride, counter boss one. You uh, all your rear guards get plus 3k, and then you can check two cards on top of your deck, add one to your hand, and then stack one. What makes this really good is the fact that you can get your stack skills off, like your Macaron, your Torijas, your Trifle, when you're not on Stalin or Fromage. This basically gives you an extra like 10 to 20k power across your field just from the skill alone for a counter blast, which actually adds a card to hand. Really important. Uh, this card is very good going second. Sometimes you do want to ride into Frost just for their protect, but I still think this card's good enough to play, especially because we already played with Stride Fodder, so why not play it? You can just pitch it for Stride or replace it with Fromage in your hand. On to the Grade 2s. We got Battle Sister Macaron. Very aggressive tool. When you check your deck during the turn, you get 10k. Very simple. Hits very hard. Hits very hard early is the important part. That with the Grade 1 Tori Joss will swing 32k columns on turn 2. Really, 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 really powerful. We got Battle Sister Trifle. Uh, skills, kind of boss one. When you play it, uh, check top three, call a Battle Sister, and stack the rest. So you can rearrange the top, important, get a card on the field. So you can basically like crit your opponent, get an extra card called out. And then its other skill is um, you get 5k, and then when you attack, Soul Blast a grade three, uh, your opponent can't Sentinel this attack. So if, like, if you stack crits on it, and then you give it the Sentinel Restrict, it can be really hard with Ichi if you're playing against Protect. It's like you're kind of out to Protect markers with Ichi. It's Trifle. Card's really good. And we're playing the vanilla package, so we're obviously playing three of the Battle Sister Orange. I was playing the uh, the Grade 2 with Shield, but this card gets bigger numbers on turn 2. It goes 31 instead of 29 with the vanilla behind it, or um, 30, which is like a good break point because your opponent playing Force, they're going to be guarding for 25 just to stop it. Really good. So, Grade 1s. Four copies of Battle Sister Torres. I talked about this before. This card's one of the better cards in the deck, obviously, because. Check the top card when you play it, add it to hand, so you're basically getting a good replace out of it. Good hand advantage, as well as being able to get power as a 13k booster. Card does pretty much everything. It's a good ideal ride target, and it gets power throughout the entire game. It's pretty much a 13k the entire game, so I really like this card. I think it's really good. Four of, obviously. Got three copies of the Stride Fodder, which basically swaps the Battle Sisters. Uh, we're already playing this, so I made a couple cuts to play the Florentines, just because to have that ability to have that flexibility to swap out between going second and going first, playing defensive, playing offensive. This card lets us do it. Got play the vanilla package, so Tempest Spheres, that, and Zazan. These cards are just really good. Uh, if you saw Zazan early, you're probably much going to win. Tempest Sphere, getting a cycling up for early Ichi is also really strong. Uh, this boosting uh, 31k on turn 2 is also really strong, plus the hand advantage you get from Tempest Sphere. The whole package is really strong. I think it should be restricted in some sort of way, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, Bushiroad listens to us. Anyways, two copies of Battle Sister Lemonade. Soul Blast 2 on play. Counter Charge 2. When we play so many Axe in this deck, so many Axe skills, this becomes really important because getting all those Axe skills off, so Counter Charging 2, getting more Axe skills off than calling a Muffin to Counter Charge again, unless you get so much advantage out of uh, just a couple Counter Blasts. So. I wasn't playing this before, but after testing it, this card's really good. 
for the triggers we play seven vanilla crits. Uh, we play four of the Battle Sister one. Obviously, I think even if we weren't playing Vanillas, we'd still play the Vanilla Battle Sister crit because it gets power from your Battle Sister skills, which is important. And then it could also be called in search. So, good. And then, obviously, the three just Vanilla crits just because we need targets with Tempest Sphere because if Tempest Sphere whiffs, it's a real feels bad. Four copies of the Battle Sister heal. Again, it's a Battle Sister, and it's a heal, and it's Vanilla. Perfect the generic over trigger because we're a three attack deck so and we don't play many great threes we're not really calling out for Maj unless we're playing really really aggressive but i'd rather just have this in the um in this you know niche cases this comes up on offense i'd rather just have the more consistent card than like oh i wish i just called my great threes out you know that's sort of a results oriented thinking this is just better we got two copies of muffin the uh unique battle sister crit this is Return if you have an Oracle. Counter charge two when you're uh, swing. So, yeah. This card is uh, really good. As long as you have a Vega or Battle System in his name, which you obviously do, you get a counter charge two on attack. And this is not the counter charge one attack is not once per turn. So, if you are on Momo, you can get counter charge four out of this card, which is like really insane. So, you can use so many skills and just flip up everything. Really good. And then two PGs. I'm still debating on whether to play Sentinel Crits instead of Vanillas, but I would like the consistency of Tempest Sphere right now. It's kind of in the danger zone. Sometimes, again, we're not riding for Maj all the time, so we're not guaranteeing ourselves a Protect Marker, which kind of makes me want to play the Sentinel Crit, or maybe cutting down a Psychic Bird for another uh, PG. But right now, I like it where it's at. It feels pretty good. I also might play the uh, Marmalade, the Grade 1 PG, but I have to find out. Uh, here it is. I'd have to find out what to replace for it. Overall, uh, still really good draw PGs are just universally good. On to the G-Zone. Four copies of Battle Sister Stolen. Now, some people are cutting this in their list to two. I think that's incorrect. Just the fact that if you're playing against decks that play really aggressive or play really combo heavy that you can't like kill, uh, Luar comes to mind. You're going to want to stack defensive triggers, and this is the best card to do it because you get triple drive, you get the um, extra boost, po extra power boost, so you can actually knock cards out of your opponent's hand. And of course you get the defensive stacking. Really, really important to get defensive stacking versus these decks that attack um, like three times like 25k. Because if you can stack multiple triggers, you can just avoid their entire turn outright. That's like stacking it over. So I still think this card is extremely strong at four. I would not cut this down any lower. Really like it. And Stolen's love the art. Four copies of Ichi Kishima. This card is self-explanatory. Unbelievable. Restricting your opponents, grade zeros and G guards. We don't. There's not much else to say. This card could turn a ten card hand into a one card hand, killing people when they just did when they just felt completely safe. Card's ridiculous. Three copies of Cyclone. Again, this card is just really good. Being able to give your vanillas up to a lot of time, you have two up. So like 22k rear guard swingers, and then a 19k booster, really good. It lets you play aggressive, and lets you get their turbo out these GB skills, which we bought two important GB3s that aren't the main use of them. Stalin gives an extra 3k to all your battle sisters for GB3. So if you're going to this first stride, you're still hitting your opponent really hard. And that Ichi is obviously the infamous skill that we all know of. But yeah, Cyclone lets us do it. As well as giving us good buffs. And then one copy of Momo. This card is just so good. It, I think it's one of the most slept on cards from this premium collection. Because it, it gives, first of all, it gives OTT a huge multi-attack. It gives us a pressure with our Vanguard. And it gives us pressure with our rears. Which aren't necessarily that threatening if you're not playing Battle Sisters. Because the rear guards get huge in Battle Sisters already. I can get... 40k columns easy and this makes them like 70 to 80k you know before triggers so card is insane kills people from you know they didn't even know where and if you have muffin in hand you can draw so many cards before going into this it's just unfair then for g guards we got two bravarios and then two amaterasu kind of fill the same niche bravarios replaces herself in hand for a counter blast it becomes a 20k shield if the circumstances are met but amaterasu is just oracle to get 25k shield and you get a soul charge out of it, so you can keep using your cards like Lemonade, keep using your Fromage skills. 
overall, both these cards are insanely good. Both can stack a defensive trigger, which is like really, really unreal versus some decks. I mean, both of them are really good. Uh, just kind of no other G-Guards to play. I think these are the best two by far. Anyways, that's the deck list. Had a lot of fun today. I played some really interesting matchups. Uh, you know, Grand Blue was one of them. I played against Blasters. That was a fun match. And then Angel Feather, the game went real long, so I had six cards in deck. <laughs> and then I was able to use my Muffin to go back into the deck to get that crit. It was a really, really exciting day. But, yeah, this is going to be my friend Siren's channel. He's a really cool guy. does a lot for our local community. So if you can get a sub to him and kind of watch the other videos on the channel, you'll see me freaking out over triggers and such on the, um, on the channel. It's a really good game. But, anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you go out and try this deck and give Battle Sisters some love, because I certainly do love them. And peace out.